Please stand. Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over the death, over, from death to life, the church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. O God, through your Son you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire and grant that in the Paschal Feast we may not, we may so burn with heavenly desire that with pure hearts and minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha, Omega, all times belong to him and all the ages to him be glory and power through every age forever, amen. By his glorious and holy wounds, may Christ our Lord guard us and keep us. Amen. Amen. The light of Christ. The light of Christ. The light of Christ.
Let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, how he saved his people in ages past. And let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chari chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw that the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea.
Even to our own day, not once delivered by the power of your mighty arm, your chosen people, from slavery under Pharaoh, to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors and you shall be my people and I will be your God. Almighty God, by the Passover of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Grant to those who are sealed by your Holy Spirit the will and the power to proclaim you to all the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. 
The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Alleluia! 
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who made this most holy night to shine with the glory of Christ's resurrection, stir up in your church that spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on, the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the experience of this liturgy says more to us than words can say, because we come in in the dark and now we're in light. We come in with empty hands and before we know it, we have a candle, a little bit of brightness, we come in alone, and before we know it, we're part of light. And not only part of the light here in the church, but part of the great story that we hear throughout Scripture. We begin very solemnly with our measured pace and our chant, and now we've broken over into hymns. And we get to say it again, Alleluia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We may have come in feeling all alone, but now we're together. And it's as if the road we're traveling, the road we've traveled together throughout Lent, has turned a corner and we're experiencing something new, something that is beautiful, that is joyful and that takes us forward in a new way. When you think of those disciples long ago, they also were traveling a road that had turned several corners. For a while, they had been exhilarated and excited as they watched the following of Jesus grow. They watched his healing they watched all the people who were coming to him. But then the road turned a little bit and they began to feel the tension. The groups of people who were jealous of him or scared of him. And Jesus himself said that he would be arrested, that he would be killed and that he would rise again, and they didn't know what to make of any of that. But he was killed. And most of them ran away and hid, and the women came and told them about it, and they didn't know what to do. But when we pick up their story today, they're on that same road of confusion, 
of distress, of uh, distraction almost. We can imagine those three women coming to the tomb, talking about the spices and the ointment, and did they have enough, and what words would they say, and how were they going to open the tomb anyway? But when they reached the tomb, that road they were on of distraction and distress and confusion, that road came to an immediate halt. The tomb was open. No one was there. But there was a message, a messenger from God who said, don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed indeed. He is risen. He has gone ahead of you to Galilee. Now we know that It took them a little while to get it. But from reading in all the gospel stories of the resurrection, we know that pretty soon they did run and tell the male disciples who hadn't been with them. And Peter and John came running over to the tomb to see what had happened. And before we know it, Mary Magdalene was there and having an encounter with the risen Christ and telling them about that. And within 12 hours, the two disciples who had been walking away to the village of Emmaus came running back into the upper room and said, we have seen him too. He is alive. They were on a whole new road. When I was growing up, we had old-fashioned cartoons And I know a lot of you used to watch them also, where the cartoonists sometimes used a little shorthand to tell you what they meant. You know, like the the light bulb that would go on over someone's head, and we knew what that meant. But some of my favorite cartoons were the ones where there was an upstanding citizen, but usually kind of a grouchy upstanding citizen, who was chasing some kind of rascal. And think of, I think of Elmer Fudd and Bugs Bunny. Elmer was always after that wascally wabbit. And I hope it doesn't seem sacrilegious, but there is something about this story that reminds me of a scene that often showed up in those cartoons. So imagine Elmer Fudd, he's all mad and befuddled and Bugs has been getting at him. And then he sees Bugs Bunny and he jumps on him. And the cartoonist shows us their fight by drawing this, uh, this cloud with bulges coming out of it. And you know, there was a foot over here and a leg over here and a Bugs carrot coming up, and all these things would be happening over here. But we, the watcher, would see in just a minute, Bugs himself would come walking out of all that tumult. The tumult kept going on, but Bugs came right over here, and he kind of looked at us, the viewers, and he gave a little smile. And then he took his carrot and walked off to whatever he was going to do next, leaving Elmer totally befuddled to figure it out several seconds later. I just have to wonder if, in a little way, Jesus maybe felt that way on Easter morning. The women and the disciples were running around. They were still caught up in distress and confusion. They didn't know what to think. They didn't really believe what he had told them in the past. But he, he had gone on. He was freed from it all. He was past it. He was beyond death. Alive in a way 
beyond anything we can imagine. And perhaps he smiled and continues to smile just a little at us as we wring our hands when we haven't realized the power of what he has given us. Jesus is beyond pain, beyond death, beyond any of the things that hurt him. He is on a different road now, and he invites us to that road, a road that is much lighter, much freer, full of wholeness and joy and even fun. Years ago, I went to a program in New York City where they were showing us young priests. Then I was a young priest. <laughs> they were showing us creative ways to express the gospel. And they took us to one church which had a lot of Broadway theater people in it, singers and dancers. And at that particular church, they made sort of Broadway musical tunes to go with a lot of the gospel readings. They were very lively. And one of the tunes, which I have remembered all these years, comes from this particular gospel on that theme of what the angel says to the women. Go to Galilee. He's gone on ahead of you. And the rector of that church explained to us that Galilee was their home territory. So they had left, they were being told, leave behind Jerusalem. Leave behind the power brokers, the important people, the people who are climbing the ladder, the people who are, who are tense. Go back to the people who needed you, who listened to you, who were willing to have their lives transformed by you in Galilee. So I'm going to try to sing you this little song. We'll see how I do. Bum, 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 go to Galilee. That's where you'll find him. He's gone ahead of you to Galilee. Galilee, that's where you'll find him. You know he had so much to do, he couldn't wait around for you. He went ahead to Galilee. Galilee, that's where he headed. Join him there to spread the word. So many people haven't heard he's risen now in Galilee. So me, may we, like St. Paul writing in Philippians 3, forget what has been on the road behind us and press forward to the victory that we know in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. On this most holy night, let us pray for all those who will receive the sacrament of new birth and for ourselves as we prepare to renew our own baptismal vow, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Deliver us, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open our hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill us with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Keep us in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach us to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send us into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring us to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints, and pray that, encouraged by their examples, asked by their prayers, aided by their prayers, and strengthened by their fellowship, we also may be partakers of the eternal life of the saints in light, through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced, renounced Satan and all his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your Son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Amen. Happy Easter, everybody. The first Eucharist of Easter is about to begin. I just want to thank all the many people uh, who have worked so hard uh, in Lent and in Holy Week, and especially as we in these in these last three days, as we prepare for uh, the icing on the cake tomorrow morning, uh, Easter Sunday. The uh, Altar Guild, the Flower Guild, the choir, the organist, uh, the the service participants. What do we say to them? Thank you very much.
and I'll just say that Catherine, if the, you know, the, preaching, the priest thing doesn't work out, you could always join the choir. <laughs> but I think she's doing just fine walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, through Son Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
goodness of God for the people of God. Thank you.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have led us with spiritual fruit in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God.